Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. We are starting a new chapter that is ecosystem in our unit of ecology. Let us first talk about this term ecosystem, what exactly it means and the factors which are responsible for maintaining this ecosystem. The term ecosystem was given by Tensley and it includes or rather ecosystem uh, can be defined as interactions between the biotic and the abiotic factors or components. This is what is the ecosystem. Now ecosystems can be terrestrial or aquatic. Now if we take the example in case of terrestrial we can take forest as an ecosystem we can take a grassland as an ecosystem and in case of aquatic we can take ocean as an ecosystem we can also take a river or a lake as an ecosystem now these are all natural ecosystems ecosystems can be man made also so aquarium is an example of a man made ecosystem. There are some man made lakes also. So they would also come under this category. So depending upon where do we find them, we can have terrestrial or aquatic. Ecosystems have four components. That means the stability of an ecosystem would depend on these components. The first is productivity. The second is decomposition. Third is energy flow. And the fourth is nutrient cycles. These are the four uh, parameters, factors or components which would decide the life stability of an ecosystem. We will talk about the first one that is productivity. Productivity basically means the amount of organic matter synthesized by a trophic level. What exactly is meant by this term trophic level? When we talk of an ecosystem there are various kinds of living organisms and we divide them on the basis of the job or the functions that they do in this uh, ecosystem. Say for example plants. Plants they are autotrophs, they are producers. So they are the ones who are going to use the sunlight and will be able to produce this organic matter. So they will come at the bottom of our complete ecosystem because everything is going to start from them. So they are producers, their job is to produce the organic matter using solar energy. The organisms which depend on these producers, they will be called the consumers. So consumers would eat the plants, they would get the food from these plants and they will make their own organic matter. So organic matter can be produced by the producers as well as by the consumers. So now here we will use two terms. One is called the primary productivity. And the second is secondary productivity. 
primary productivity is the amount of organic matter or organic matter synthesized by producers if if plants or the producers are making the organic matter then that is called the primary productivity so wherever we find the term primary it means we are talking about the producers and what would be the secondary then in the case of secondary it is the organic matter synthesized by the consumers and the consumers can be of different levels but here organic matter produced by them will be called the secondary so if we talk of primary productivity we are talking about the plants synthesizing the organic matter and whenever we use the word secondary productivity we are talking about the consumers synthesizing the organic matter now if plants use sunlight and they produce some organic matter as long as they live this is called the gross primary productivity gpp is the abbreviation which is used gross is total amount of organic matter which is synthesized by producers total amount of organic matter produced by them now out of this entire organic matter which they have synthesized they will be using some of this matter for their activities in case of plants maximum energy requirement is for respiration they do not locomote they don't have to digest food except for the places like seeds where the endosperm or the reserve material from cotyledon is to be digested so they don't need all this extra energy which animals do in case of animals maximum energy would be spent on muscular movement so here the expenditure is only for respiration so after spending that energy using some of this uh, productivity whatever they are able to save is called the net primary productivity so how can we calculate net primary productivity this is net so net is after expenditure so this is gross primary productivity minus whatever is spent in respiration that gives us the net primary productivity so gross is the total and net is what is saved what is stored in the body so now when the consumers feed on these plants say a deer eats the grasses then what is the deer going to get it is going to get whatever has been stored by the plant so this net which is stored by the plant will be passed on to the carnivores so in carnivores also whatever food they eat they would make their own organic matter total amount of organic matter made will be termed as gross secondary productivity this is total amount of organic matter synthesized by the consumers again they would spend something which they have synthesized after expenditure whatever they have to spend whatever they save will be called the net secondary productivity so this is the saved organic matter after all expenditure how can we find this out it will be gross secondary productivity minus expenditure and as i said in case of animals maximum expenditure takes place for locomotion so minus whatever is spent in locomotion whatever spent in digestion whatever spent in respiration all this removed and whatever is stored will be the net secondary productivity so the things which we have to remember are the words primary is always for producers and secondary is always for 
consumers. Gross is the total and net is what remains after expenditure. So this is the first factor or the component of our ecosystem and this would be responsible for maintaining the ecosystem. In the next part we'll talk about the other component that is decomposition.